Understanding your recovery cylinders is paramount when performing a safe system service while also abiding by industry rules and regulations. Before using a recovery cylinder, check to ensure that the cylinder is within its certified testing date. Cylinders should be returned and tested every five years to ensure they can safely store the given refrigerant. As stated in the previous video, there are several different types of refrigerants and refrigerant classes. It's the technician's responsibility to recover refrigerant into its respective pressure-rated cylinder. High-pressure refrigerant, or 410A for example, should be recovered into a high-pressure cylinder. Some refrigerants that would normally be recovered into a standard pressure cylinder should be recovered into a high-pressure half-ton cylinder because low-pressure half-ton cylinders are only rated for 260 PSIG. For specific refrigerant cylinder recommendations, please consult the manufacturer or refrigerant supplier. Since refrigerant expands as temperature increases, it's extremely important never to overfill the cylinder. When a cylinder is overfilled with liquid refrigerant, a slight rise in temperature can lead to an explosion. A common rule is that the refrigerant weight should not exceed 80% of the cylinder's water capacity weight, commonly referred to on the cylinder as WC. In fact, the more correct way is to calculate the refrigerant weight to be added via the refrigerant's liquid density at a given temperature, typically 130 degrees Fahrenheit. For a greater margin of safety in high ambient areas, this operating temperature would be higher. Using a high-accuracy refrigerant recovery scale along with pressure temperature charts will help you safely fill the cylinder. In addition to these tools, HVACR service apps, like the Appion Central app, can help you understand the safe cylinder capacity for each refrigerant you might be working with. We've already reviewed the dangers of mixing different refrigerants inside recovery cylinders, but when recovering into an empty cylinder, this is not a worry. However, you will want to evacuate the cylinder to ensure there is no moisture or contamination that could negatively affect the refrigerant. A well-evacuated cylinder also aids recovery by creating a low-pressure area for the refrigerant to migrate to at the beginning of the recovery process. Regardless of what refrigerant you're recovering or if the cylinder is empty or contains refrigerant already, there is still another variable to remember. This variable is recovery cylinder temperature during recovery. Since the pressure of a refrigerant is directly affected by temperature, keeping the cylinder temperature as low as possible reduces the pressures the recovery machine has to work against, which, in turn, speeds up recovery as a whole. The best way to keep the cylinder temperatures low during recovery is to maintain liquid refrigerant flow from the system to the recovery cylinder. In instances where this is not attainable, Using the fan from the recovery machine to draw air over the recovery cylinder can help dissipate heat. Additionally, there are several other ways to cool the cylinder, most of which we will explain later in the series. With a better knowledge of cylinders and proper cylinder use, we can move on to understanding your tools and equipment that will lay the foundation for a full-flow recovery.